Now I'm sure many of you just like myself are guilty of using the standard print debugging method where all you do is you go in your program and you do something like print run or print run and then the value of a variable and you just have a bunch of print statements kind of scattered all over the place and this is really what you're using as your debugging log. This is giving you information. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with doing this and in small programs this is completely fine. Once you get into larger programs or you start dealing with stuff that's a lot more complicated, you definitely want to have some type of persistent log that's going to store all of the data from your program and have different levels of logs. What I mean by that is you could have something that's an info or something that's a warning, something that's critical or an exception or an error. It's just going to be better and a more sustainable practice. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the logging module, show you how simple it is to use, and then you can implement this in your next projects. Now, before we dive in, I do quickly want to mention that if you want to get better at Python, Go, and programming in general, then do check out my programming course, programmingexpert.io. This is the best place to learn how to code. It's interactive, has over 300 practice questions, has programming projects, teaches fundamental programming, advanced programming, object-oriented programming, software design, and so much more. If you guys want to support me, check it out from the link in the description and you can use discount code tip. With that said, let's get into the logging. All right, so let's get started. The first thing to do here is import logging. Now this is a built-in module in Python. You do not need to install this and it comes with a bunch of basic functionality that you can use right out of the box. So first of all, we have a bunch of different levels of logging. Now the first level here is going to be debug. So let's just type that out. The next level we're going to have is going to be info. After this, we are going to have a warning and then continuing, we are going to have an error. And then finally, we are going to have a critical. Okay, so these are the five levels of logging that we have and they go in this order. So debug is kind of the least important, info second, warning third, error fourth and critical fifth. Now by default, when you use the logging module, you're only gonna get the output for anything that's at the warning level or above. So warning, error, and critical will actually log to your console. Anything that's info and debug will not, and I'll show you how we change that later on. But for example, if I just go in here and I say debug, I say info, I say warning, I say error, and I say critical, and then I run the code, you'll see in my console here that I just get three errors here warning, root, warning, and sorry, not uh, errors, but logs, error, root, error, and then critical, root, critical. Now, root actually stands for what logger I'm using, and I'm using the root logger because we haven't configured our own, which I'll show you later on. Obviously, this is the logging level, and then this was the message that we actually had that we wanted to log. So right out of the box, you can do this. You will get a log, it will go to your console, but this really isn't much better than what we had previously when we were using print debugging. So what I want to show you now is how we configure our logger so that we can get this to go to a file and we can change the format of these messages here so we get something like the time that an error occurred at or some other information that you might want. So to configure our logger here, what we can do is logging dot and then this is going to be basic config. Now, the first thing we can do is pass a level. Now, the level here is going to be what level we want to start outputting or logging at. So if I pass a debug, this means we're going to log everything at the debug level and above. If I were to pass, say, info, then same thing, it's going to be at info and above, so we would skip debug. So this is really useful because later on, if you want to get a log of only, say, the errors and criticals, you can go in and change this to be, say, error or critical, and then you'll get a log only containing those. And then in the future, maybe you want to get all of the different types, so you go in and again, you would change it to something like debug or info. For now, we'll leave it at info, but I want to show you how we actually get this to go to a file. So to do that, we're going to say file name and we're going to put the name of the file we want this log to go to. So for now, I'll just go with something like log.log. .log. So now that we've done the file name, we just need to do the file mode and we're going to say file mode is equal to W. And what this means is we are going to create this file every single time, overriding a file if it already exists. There's a few other modes you can put here, but usually you're just going to use W again, that will create the file and override it if it already exists. If you wanted this to create, say, logs based on the time or something, then you would change this name to use a variable and be dynamic. So maybe the name of your log is going to be based on the current time or something along those lines. Anyways, if I run the code here, uh, oops, we got an issue. It says basic config is not defined. Let's just put logging before that because I forgot to put that. 
Let's rerun here. And now I get log.log. .log, and inside of this log file, I have this information. Now, if I do rerun this code, then it's going to override this log.log .log file uh, and place inside of it whatever we logged in the next kind of run. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, anyways, that is the basics there. That is how you set up the uh, logger to go to a file. There's a bunch of other options I'll show you shortly, but really this is the fundamentals of using your logger. Now, one thing I do quickly want to mention here is that this command can only be ran one time. So as soon as you make any logs, you do debug, info, warning, any of these methods here, uh, this will no longer work and you'll get some type of exception or kind of weird error. So only do this one time, typically right at the beginning of your program. OK, now one more thing I want to show you with the basic config here is that we can change the format of our logged messages. So right now we're getting the logging level, we're getting the name of the logger, and then we're getting the message associated with that. However, we can change this to be much more specific uh, and to be really whatever we want. So I'm going to put this on a new line here, but I'm going to say format is equal to as another argument here. And now I can put in a formatting string that's going to be used to format all of my logs. So to do that, I'm going to do something like percent, and then I'm going to use this special property here called ASC time, uh, which is essentially a human readable time. I'm then going to put a hyphen. I'm going to put percent, and then I'm going to put inside of my parentheses here the level name. I'm going to put an S, and then I'm going to put hyphen. I'm going to put percent. Inside of here, I'm going to put message, and then I'm going to put an S. Now, this is just a standard formatting string in Python. You have percent, you have your parentheses, and then you have your type. In this case, we're putting S for string. So inside of here, we're going to have a bunch of different properties that are valid to place here. Now, you may be wondering, you know, how do you know ASC time, level name, uh, message, etc.? Well, there's an entire list of attributes that you can use from the Python documentation. So let me actually open that up here and bring it over to this page. Uh, if I scroll down here, you can see that we have args, ASC time, created uh, uh, exe info file name funk name all this type of stuff and it shows you how you would actually uh, do the formatting for this so you can have a look at this I'll leave this link in the description anyways let's have a look at what happens now when I save and run my code and I go back to log.log .log. notice we get some better formatting here where we actually get a human readable time string we get the level and then we get the message and of course we can add a bunch of other stuff in the future if we'd like to all right, so now that we've looked at that, I'm going to show you a few ways to log some more stuff that you may be interested in logging. For example, how do you log the value of a variable? How do you log a stack trace? And then we will get to custom loggers. So let's have a look at how we log a variable. First of all, this is pretty straightforward. You can just embed it in a string in really any way that you'd like. But let's say we have a variable like X, it's equal to two. Uh, I can do something like the value of X is and then inside of curly braces, I can simply put my variable name and I'll just put an F before this string and I'll use an F string to embed this variable inside of the string. Now, you also could just use a concatenation. You could do something like plus string X. You could use a standard formatting string in Python like we were doing up here. Really any way works. But if you're using Python 3.6 or above, this is the simplest. Just put an F before your string, write the string and then anything you want to embed, put in curly braces and it will show up. So let's save the code here, go to log.log .log, and ah, sorry, it's because my logging level is info. This isn't showing up. So let's just change this to info here. Let's go to log.log. .log. Uh, OK, let's run one more time. Go back here and then you see the value of X is two. Perfect. So that is how you log the value of a variable. Next, if you want to log a stack trace, so an exception occurred and you actually want to log that, uh, there's a few ways to do that. So let's just write a try except block here. I have something like try. Oops, I didn't want all of that. Let's go with one over zero. We know this will raise an exception. I'm going to say accept, uh, accept and I'll accept the zero division error as E. And then there's a few ways. The first way to log this exception here would be doing something like logging dot error. And then inside of here, I'll just do something like zero division error. And then I pass this parameter here. EXC info uh, is equal to true. And sorry, this is an argument, not a parameter. And this will actually log the exception that occurred uh, as well as the zero division error message. So let's save this. Let's run. Let's go to log.log. .log, and now notice we get the trace back here as well uh, after the error that we logged. So that's the first way to do this. The next way to do this is to actually use this custom function here called exception. Uh, now inside of here, we don't we don't need to pass the exe info equals true. Uh, instead, we just pass some type of string message. And when I run the code now, it will automatically give me the stack trace as well as the message and the message type will be error. 
to prove this to you, let's just change this to be test. So, you know, I'm not using the old log. When I rerun this and go here, we get test type error, and then we get our trace back. Okay. So that is the basics. That's probably all the stuff you're really going to want to log. Other than that, you can embed it in a string. However you see fit. Now let's have a look at custom loggers. So oftentimes when you're working in larger projects, you want to have separate log files and each log file will contain uh, some different information, right? You may also want to send the logs through, say, HTTP. You may want to send an email with the logs. You can do all of that using the logging module. Now, I'm not going to go through HTTP and emails. That's a bit more complicated. You can find that from the documentation, but I will show you how we separate into different log files uh, and use kind of custom loggers. So to create a custom logger, we're going to say logger is equal to log logging dot and then this is going to be get logger now inside of here you simply put the name of the logger that you want and if this logger exists it will give it to you if it doesn't exist it will create it for you so this actually means if you have multiple python modules for example you don't need to pass this logger object around you can simply use the logging dot get logger and if there is a logger that already exists with this name it will give it to you otherwise it will just create a new one now, the convention is to use the underscore underscore name variable as your logger and to have one logger for each Python module. Now, you don't have to do that. This is just the convention. And the reason you would use name is because that gives you the name of the current module. And you know that's going to be unique in your Python project, at least if you've set it up correctly. So we have logger is equal to logging dot get logger. We're going to use name. Now, this one won't already exist, so it will give us a new one. And now what we can do is use this custom logger to log a message. So let's do this. I'm going to say logger. So rather than logging, it's logger, which is the variable we have here. And then we'll go dot and we can just do something like actually info here. And we'll just say test the custom logger. Now let's run the code. Let's go to log.log .log, and then notice we get test the custom log. So that's great, but you notice here that it's going inside of the original log file that we set up using the logging.basicconfig. It's also using this format uh, and this file name and all of that stuff. So if we want to change that and we want this to go into a separate file, we need to set up something called a handler. Now a handler is just what allows us to configure this logger essentially. So I'm gonna say my handler is equal to logging dot, and then this is gonna be the file handler. There's all kinds of other handlers related to say HTTP, email. I imagine the most basic one you guys are gonna use is just file ones. So that's why I'm going with file handler. And then inside of here, I just pass the name of the file uh, that I want my logs to go to. So handler is equal to logging dot file handler, and I have test.log. Now that I have this, I also want to set up a formatter and then I want to configure my handler with the formatter and then add my handler to my logger. I know this seems a little bit confusing, but you set up a handler. That's what's going to handle how this info is getting logged. You then have a formatter and that's going to format the logs and then you add that to whatever logger you want. Uh, and that kind of sets everything up and configures it for you. So let's make our formatter. We're going to say formatter is equal to logging formatter. And then we can use the exact same format that we had before or we could change this slightly if we want. So let's actually go and add one more attribute in here that is going to be the name of the logger just so we can see this. So I'm going to go name like that and now it will give us the name of whatever logger it is that's actually logging to this output. Okay, so now that we have that we need to set the formatter for our handler. So we're going to say handler.setFormatter and then we'll set the formatter and then we need to add the handler to our logger. So logger dot add handler and then handler like that. OK, so now we have logger dot info. And when we do this, we should see that it goes to a new log file called test.log. So let's run the code. And now test.log has underscore underscore main as the name. That's what we were expecting. We have info, test the custom logger and the time as well. Perfect. And then log dot log is unchanged because uh, we did not override this or do anything in this. We were now using the custom logger from this file. So with that said, I do think I'm going to wrap up the video here. I do know that I went very fast in this video. I just wanted to be concise and give you the information as quickly as I could. This is a pretty useful module. Definitely recommend it in a larger uh, project. And this is super useful if you have some type of production code base because you can actually send the logs to yourself. You can view them afterwards. And again, you have that persistent data as opposed to having a few print statements and having to kind of parse through the console and find the information that you're looking for. With that said, if you guys enjoyed, please do leave a like subscribe to the channel and I will see you in another one.